Growing up as a kid in Detroit, my mom had six kids and she adopted another four. So there were like 10 kids at my house. What my mom did, she bought a drum kit and she bought some percussion instruments as well as a guitar. And then the lady down the street offered us a piano. She said, if you guys can get this piano at my house, you guys can have it. So her and about eight kids, we walked down the street and we rode this big upright piano down the street to our house. And we got into the house and um, everybody just started playing different instruments. You know, all of us would switch up on different instruments. And um, the fact that having kids, we kind of looked at it as a toy, as a, our instruments was something for us to do and play with and have fun. We started our own like family band and we would kind of jam on our front porch for the neighborhood kids. They would all come around and check us out. We'd be playing like some of the latest songs and just learning music and stuff. So that's how I kind of got started in the, my initial uh, catalyst for the music industry. Uh, from there, I ventured off more into the gospel field. I, um, in church, I had a chance to actually um, sit under some really great musicians in Detroit, like Thomas Whitfield. He was like a mentor to me and he introduced me to the Winans family as well as the Clark family and uh, Vanessa Bell Armstrong. I recorded with them. Um, a few years later, after I graduated from high school, I, um, had, I was playing at a restaurant in the suburbs of Detroit out in uh, Troy. Um, Earl Clue was there, a jazz artist from Detroit. He was out there having dinner with his manager and um, he came up to me after and he said, um, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm looking for a bass player and uh, would you mind coming out to Baker's Keyboard Lounge and auditioning for me? So I went out, tried out for that gig, got it, and that was my first major gig going overseas to Japan with Earl Clue doing the jazz thing. Um, from there, came back home to Detroit and started playing locally around some more, doing some more stuff with different bands in the city. Uh, heard about an audition in, in New York City for Mary J. Blige. So I went out to New York and I hung out there for a while in the studio, went to the rehearsal hall, um, auditioned for Mary. And that was a really cool thing because I really wasn't even invited to the audition. I just kind of showed up and uh, was able to go in and play. And uh, she liked it, my playing. Her management was there. They liked it, my playing. And they asked me to stay. They didn't know that I didn't live in New York. So I was kind of like just there hanging. Um, after that, um, I played with Mary. Actually, I worked with Mary J. Blige for 10 years as her musical director and as her bassist uh, from her first record, was the 411, all the way to the uh, No More Drama album. Uh, with Mary J. Blige, I was actually able to connect with a lot of different artists and producers in New York, like P. Diddy. Um, I worked on the Will Smith record there, um, LL Cool J, 98 Degrees. Um, had a chance to work on that. Um, while in New York, I had another big audition, which was New Kids on the Block. Um, they were looking for a musical director, so I went audition for them and did an interview with them. That worked out really well, but unfortunately, uh, the tour wasn't that long. It wound up getting canceled halfway through, but it was a great, great tour. The guys were amazing. Um, from New Kids, back in New York, once again, hooked up with Boys to Men. Had a chance to MD for those guys. Um, we did some touring over in Europe and over in London and Germany. Toured around Europe for a while with those guys. Um, after Boys to Men, I wind up uh, just still doing more work in New York and hooked up with Teddy Riley. Teddy Riley was a great influence on me because Teddy was also a teacher and he taught me actually how to play New Jack Swing and how to approach that whole style of music uh, which was the New Jack Swing. So I toured with Teddy Riley and Guy for several years um, around the world. Um, in between my gig with Teddy Riley and Mary J. Blige, I heard about another audition in Philadelphia, and that was for Mr. Grover Washington Jr. Um, went up to Philly, auditioned for Grover, and it was a, a great story there because uh, when I got to my audition, the drummer wasn't there. There was no drummer there. It was just me. Grover, the rhythm section, Doc Gibbs, and some other cats. Um, he said, well, there's no drummer here. What do you want to do? I said, well, hey, I came all the way from Detroit, man. I want to play. So I did the whole audition with no drums. And uh, after that was over with, I thought, well, maybe, maybe this is not going to work out. But when I got to the train station, he actually called me back, and they brought me back to Philly. And then I wound up touring with Grover for a few years 
after that. Um, about four years touring with Grover. After Grover, um, went back to Detroit, hooked up with a neighbor of mine who turned out to be a superstar. It was the late Aaliyah. Aaliyah lived about maybe about five blocks from my house, and her dad was actually a road manager for the wine. And so when he was putting together her tour, he came in and seek me and some other guys from the band. And we were actually Aaliyah's very first band when she went on tour with her Age Is Nothing But A Number tour. Uh, worked with Aaliyah on and off for several years. Um, after Aaliyah, I went to LA and did some a lot of recording and some studio work out there. Did some auditions out there for Janet Jackson and uh, a couple other artists. Um, that didn't work out, but it actually wound up being a blessing in disguise because when I came back home, I had got a phone call from Beyonce. And from Beyonce, um, we toured all over the world with her on her first solo um, tour, which was um, Dangerously in Love. Um, right after her tour ended, she commissioned the same band to back up Destiny Child. So we went on the road with the Destiny Child tour and finished that up. Um, Right after that, as that tour was ending, I had a chance to um, meet Chris Brown, also in L.A. Chris um, took us on his tour, and it was a co-headliner between Chris Brown and Neo, and there was one band for the whole show, so I wound up being a musical director for Chris and Neo at the same time. Um, that worked out really cool, because as, as uh, Chris, when he moved on, Neo kept the band, and we continue to uh, perform with him. Um, in the middle, somewhere in between, I went to Chicago and hooked up with R. Kelly, toured with him for about a year and a half, uh, and then back home, coming back to Detroit, uh, a good friend of mine, Joe Wilson, gave me a call. He was the musical director for Lady Gaga, and he told me that he was putting together a new band, and would I be interested in coming out and trying out for it? So I went to New York, tried out for it, it worked out great. Um, and then I toured with Gaga for about three years after that. And now I'm back in Detroit working on some other really cool things. I'm working on the Motown Review, which is gonna be a Vegas act where we're gonna actually um, bring back the old Motown Review and we're gonna reduplicate that whole scene with the same acts, Temptations, Four Tops, Gladys Knight, and it should be it should be a pretty interesting pro project.